Uh, I'm going to talk about bad uh, galaxies in modified gravity models. And uh, as you see here, uh, I will talk about these five papers. Uh, um, actually, I'll, I, I presume that uh, many of you uh, uh, were participants in Zanjan's uh, conference, and I had a similar talk there. So uh, I decided to put more emphasis on this last paper. Uh, we have uh, recently submitted this paper, and I have uh, the permission uh, from Pavel Krupa to uh, talk about this work here. Uh, as you see, my collaborators are Indranil Banik, Neda Gafurian, Ingo Teis, uh, Gramia Kandlish, Benoit Fami, Elena Asensio, and um, Pavel Krupa. <coughs> Uh, yeah, let, uh, let us start with uh, a brief introduction to modified gravity. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, modified gravity has a long history. Uh, uh, maybe it can be, uh, you know, it, it can date back to Einstein himself when he tried to um, um, write a new version of general relativity. We call it Palatini gravity. Uh, but currently, there are several uh, motivations, you know, for extending gravity, and maybe the main ones are um, uh, quantum gravity and also uh, dark matter and dark energy. By modified gravity here, I mean uh, theories that deny the existence of dark matter particles, you know, and there are uh, three important uh, alternative theories. The first one is MOND. Everybody knows this theory. Uh, uh, actually, at least in its first versions uh, of MOND, the uh, idea was that uh, uh, instead of trying to uh, modify uh, to uh, modify gravitational theory, uh, maybe it's better to uh, modify the uh, Newtonian dynamics. You know, it's a brilliant idea and uh, it has many uh, predictions and uh, many uh, su uh, successes, at least in a local uh, uh, galactic scale. But uh, uh, as everybody knows, there are some problems in cosmological scales. There is until uh, uh, mm, final uh, covariant theory for Mond. Uh, the other theory I'm uh, interested to talk about is non-local gravity by uh, uh, Bahram Mashun and Frederick Hale. Um, you know, uh, uh, there are uh, many theories uh, which try to add non-local features of gravity. Uh, but I believe that this, this one is uh, uh, somehow uh, special, you know, because uh, uh, this theory can be considered as a teleparallel gravity. You know, in this uh, in the teleparallel formulation, uh, the uh, gra uh, the uh, field equations of gravitations uh, are very similar to Maxwell's equations. You know, and uh, um, uh, it's an interesting idea, a very old idea, in fact. But uh, in Mashun and Frederick Hale approach, they have tried to add non-local features to gravitational physics as in the same way as people do in electrodynamics. You know, this is the idea. And uh, the other theory, I forgot to say that I'm not going through details and uh, covariant field equations and uh, other stuff. You know, I just use the weak field limit because uh, I, I'm going to show some... Uh, uh, simulations, galactic simulations, where we only use the weak field limit and uh, there is no need to uh, relativistic equations. The other theory is mod modified gravity. It is, in fact, a scalar tensor vector theory of gravity. It has some scalar fields and, and proca vector field, and this combination of fields um, can provide some degrees of freedom to uh, handle dark matter problems. Um, so, uh, so uh, by modified gravity in this talk, I just mean this theory, uh, these uh, three theories. <clears throat> okay, for um, 
uh, exponential uh, uh, models, I, I have a table here. It's too small even for myself. But as you see, we have uh, five models here. Uh, we have, um, you know, the initial condition start from an, uh, uh, from an exp exponential disk surrounded by a halo in dark matter models. You know, we use uh, different dark matters. For example, in LPH, we use live Plumber halo model, and with live we mean uh, a halo uh, constructed from particles. You know, and RHH stands for rigid Hernquist halo. We have a Hernquist halo. Hernquist halo has a cusp, and uh, it's a rigid. You know, we have uh, no uh, particle there. And NLG, it's an exponential disk in non-local gravity. As you see here, there is no halo in this model. And modified gravity models, we do not have any halo. And MOG is an exponential disk in uh, uh, John Moffat's theory. So I will talk, uh, talk about these five uh, models. And uh, let me mention that we use a galaxy code uh, written by Jerry Selwood. We have modified the code to fit uh, modified gravity models. And uh, uh, here you can see the, the time steps and the cylindrical uh, grid and other information necessary for uh, any simulations and body simulations. It's also necessary to mention that the moon model has been done in um, uh, Pavel Kropos team and they use a poor code, Phantom of Ramses code, to simulate galaxies in uh, modified Newtonian dynamics. Uh, so, uh, the other important thing I have to mention is that uh, non-local gravity and MOG in the weak field limit, they are very similar to each other and they induce and introduce in fact some two uh, free parameters. And uh, at least in non-local gravity, these parameters uh, can be time dependent. So uh, here in these simulations, we consider the simplest case, you know, we, we assume that these parameters are constant and this induces substantial simplicity in our simulations. The other important thing uh, is that we start with initial state, which is locally stable, you know, and uh, as you know, to stabilize the disk uh, locally, we need to use <coughs> Tumbrace criterion, you know, and at this parameter Q, if this parameter gets uh, larger than one, then the disk will be stable and you will not see fragmentations in the disk. Uh, okay. Um, here we have shown the uh, rotation curves for comparing modified gravity with, with dark matter models. It's necessary to start from initial uh, conditions which are completely the same, the same in uh, both uh, viewpoints. Uh, you know, of course, there isn't any halo in modified gravity models, but by initial conditions, I mean velocity and position of baryonic matter. They should be the same as, uh, you know, and here you can see the uh, surface density and velocity dispersions. Uh, there is a good agreement between them. Uh, we have shown only mode and uh, uh, plumber halo model here. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, please, uh, please remember here, we only, you know, in the uh, initial conditions, uh, only the uh, circular velocity is the same, you know, and uh, um, we know that this doesn't mean the acceleration or forces are the same. I will turn back again to this point in other slides. Uh, now, let us see some snapshots for Mondian simulation. Uh, as you see, we start from uh, this initial state. Uh, you know, disks is you know, rotationally dominated. Every particle uh, uh, is rotating around the center. We have a thickness for the disk, and um, you know, we have used the uh, sec squared uh, uh, profile in the uh, vertical direction. And here you see that in a short time, uh, compared to the age, uh, I mean. Uh, or the dynamical time uh, attributed to spiral galaxies, uh, the disk is seriously unstable. And we see here uh, spiral waves. 
you know, or here you see, you see the twofold symmetric spiral wave. This is bar instability. And after that, you know, in, in a final uh, stages, uh, we see a um, calm and a stable disk with an inside, uh, with a bar inside the uh, disk, you know. And an important uh, thing I can mention here is that uh, uh, we have a radial expansion here, you know, please see the uh, initial state and the final state. And we say it's see that the disk has been grown in radial uh, direction. And as you heard uh, from Jerry Selwood, he, he said that it cannot be related to radial migration. You know, uh, we uh, need to find another reason for it. Okay. Um, and this graph shows other models. You know, with longer time interval. Here, this uh, top panels belong to LPH. As you see, the disk is unstable. It's very interesting. We cannot uh, suppress the instability. You know, it's an, uh, um, it's not too bad because in uh, real universe we see that more than sixty percent of galaxies has the bar. So um, it's maybe it's satisfactory. Uh, again, we see that at the final st stage there is a bar here and uh, uh, the main difference visually uh, it, uh, you know clear in this graph is that there isn't any radial expansion it, uh, this means that maybe the uh, halo uh, around the galaxy um, uh, suppresses i do not know how but suppresses the radial uh, expansion and here you see the rigid halo case something similar happens at least in this uh, uh, snapshots, but we will see that there are some uh, important uh, differences between rigid halo and uh, live halo. Uh, this panel belongs to non-local gravity, rapid instability. You see the spiral arms here, and at the end of simulations, in the end of the simulation, you see uh, the radial uh, expansion of the disk. This is the case also for Mark. You know, they behave in a similar way as expected because they both provide some exponential uh, cor uh, corrections to um, uh, Newtonian gravitational force. Yeah, here we see to quantify, in fact, the radial uh, expansion, we have uh, plotted the uh, Lagrange radii R as a function of X and uh, R of X means that the radius which contains X fraction of mass. You know, it's clearly, it's completely clear that these modified gravity models behave differently from a standard dark matter case. You know, we see that R of X doesn't change too much, but in modified gravity models, it is changing rapidly. This is another realization of the... Uh, what we saw in this uh, in the uh, snapshots. Okay, uh, but bar instability, uh, as you know, bar instability uh, um, it's very relevant to dark matter. You know, it's, it has a long history. Uh, it, you can um, uh, uh, say that uh, dark halo is uh, one of the theoretical discoveries of James Peebles. Uh, who has received the Nobel Prize for theoretical discoveries in cosmology, okay? So uh, here I, I, we have plotted the bar amplitude and by, uh, by, with, by am, uh, bar amplitude, uh, we uh, mean simply the second uh, coefficient of Fourier transform in, for uh, surface density. And uh, different panels here belong to different number of particles it's necessary in, in body simulations to check that your uh, results doesn't depend, do not depend to a uh, number of particles. And uh, we have used a uh, uh, logarithmic scale here. So this straight lines are exponential growth. So in all of the models, you see that bar instability uh, happens. We cannot prevent that the bar instability, but the, uh, there are some main features here. Let's talk about this uh, left panel. As, uh, as you see, the instability happens more uh, earlier in MOND model and then in non-local gravity. 
And uh, the other uh, uh, clear uh, feature here is that um, there are some oscillations in uh, modified gravity models. We, we uh, uh, don't see similar behavior in dark matter models, okay? So uh, uh, to understand the uh, origin of these oscillations, we have plotted the uh, power spectrum. Uh, uh, of the, um, by power spectrum, I mean there are some uh, density waves propagating on the surface of the disk. And then uh, as any other waves, you can find the spectrum. And uh, we have found this uh, <coughs> uh, uh, spectrum using uh, Selwood's code. Uh, and the first uh, talk we uh, saw a dynamic version of this uh, power spectrums for another model. By the way, uh, this is uh, this uh, this left panel belongs to non uh, to uh, uh, dark matter model. We see that uh, in the vertical, uh, uh, you know, there um, uh, the frequency of the uh, um, wave is changing in dark matter. But here in modified gravity models, we see uh, uh, horizontal lines, you know, every horizontal line belongs to an explicit uh, frequency uh, propagating in the, surf the surface of the disk, okay? So uh, this is important. I will turn back, back again to it because uh, we need to uh, explain why frequency of the wave, uh, we can say that the main wave is bar mode wave in the uh, dark matter model. I will talk about it later, but in modified gravity, we see that there are at least two density waves, you know, and the existence of these waves can uh, um, <clears throat> produce beating and can produce oscillations in other quantities. And in some cases, it can, uh, it can produce some difficulties. I will uh, talk about it. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, well, uh, buckling is instability uh, happens in all of our uh, models. You know, uh, with buckling instability, as Juntai uh, mentioned, that we have a state-like behavior in the vertical direction. You know, we have a thin disk, and suddenly we see that uh, the uh, uh, thickness of the disk increases. Here, uh, uh, we have shown the uh, root mean square thickness or height and a specified radius, you know, it's, it's, it can be uh, uh, misleading. However, we see that uh, buckling instability happens earlier in MOND model. And um, uh, in the end of simulation, we see that dark matter leads to uh, higher thickness, you know. Uh, but uh, as I said, this can be misleading and it's necessary to find the thickness uh, as a function of radius to see uh, you know, to find a better and general view of the morphology of the disk in the vertical direction. So, <clears throat> uh, here, in fact, this was a suggestion um, by Indra Neil. And I, I, as you see in the left panel, we have plotted the mean height and here the root mean square height. Um, we expect to see the disk completely in the mid plane. You know, this is the case for all models except NLG. Um, you know, any deviation from uh, uh, horizontal line, zero line, in fact, can be uh, explained as the existence of a warp. So in non-local gravity model, we have a warp. Uh, on the other hand, when we uh, look at the, uh, RMS height in, uh, in terms of radius, you know, and then you see that uh, in inner regions, dark matter model leads to thicker, you know, it's thicker in fact, but when we uh, move to a larger radii, then you see that uh, modified gravity models uh, predict uh, thicker disks. You know, uh, we believe that this, uh, this is important, you know, finding different morphologies in these different viewpoints. Uh, uh, if uh, uh, one can find a good way to compare them with observations, then uh, it, it, it could be helpful to rule out a theory or support the theory. So um, uh, 
I, I should say that in vertical direction, uh, we have expect to see different behavior from dark matter. Uh, I mean, between dark matter and modified gravity. Uh, as an example, in non-local gravity, let us uh, um, simply talk about the its weak field limit. You know, we see that all the stuff related to the uh, uh, non-local features of gravity gather as and appear as a, um, a, a correction term on the right-hand side of the uh, Poisson equation. You know, we have a term and we call it effective dark matter. There is no dark matter in this theory, but we have a term which uh, is claimed to play the uh, role of dark matter. So, uh, as you see, this is that term and there is a kernel and this kernel related to uh, non-local features, you know, it's completely unknown. And uh, mm, Hale and Mashwung uh, has tried to postulate it using uh, rotation curves, you know. So uh, when we find isodensities of this, uh, then, uh, 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 this dark matter density for uh, in a spiral, uh, for an exponential disk, then we see that the uh, halo, this effective halo, it's not a spherical. You know, and uh, but in dark matter models, we generally believe that uh, the disk uh, uh, halos are spherical. So one can simply say that uh, in these different viewpoints, we have the same rotation curve. This means that radial uh, acceleration is the same in the mid plane. But uh, when you look at the uh, 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 vertical velocity, uh, vertical um, forces, then these theories are different. This should be the case also for Mond and for any other theory. Uh, so I just uh, I, I'm just trying to uh, say that uh, in the vertical direction, uh, modified gravity and dark matter can be uh, different, and it can uh, you know uh, um, studying the vertical structure and morphology of again uh, as part of this might be very helpful to discriminate between dark matter and modified gravity. Here. Uh, um, you see um, the edge on view of our simulations, uh, actually simulations by Neda. Uh, uh, you see that uh, in dark matter model, we see its shape, uh, peanut shape, you know, it's very close to what we see in observations, but in modified gravity, we see a warp here and a different uh, morphology in inner radii, you know, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, it needs uh, more investigation. Uh, in all simulations in the past uh, five years, we have not find the explicit peanut shapes in modified gravity models, but we know works, for example, with Combe, uh, who claims that uh, uh, peanut can be formed even in MOND uh, simulations. But in all simulations, we uh, MOND simulations, we couldn't find any um, evidence for these uh, um, peanut shapes. Okay, another important thing is bar pattern speed. Uh, it's crucial for us in this study. Uh, for simulations, uh, I, I would say, I should say that for uh, real observations, um, measuring pattern speed is not easy. You know, there are many difficulties, but in, uh, in simulations, it's very straightforward. Straightforward. And uh, here, uh, again, for different number of particles, you see the uh, uh, pattern speed. Um, let me reiterate that pattern speed is the rotational speed of a bar inside the galaxy. Very simple. And um, we see that for modified gravities, this pattern speed is almost constant. But for dark matter model, there is a rapid uh, uh, reduction and increase, uh, decrease, sorry, in the uh, pattern speed. Uh, it, it's not a new thing, and we uh, know that mm, dynamical friction, uh, as Jerry mentioned, dynamical friction slows down the pattern speed, you know, and uh, uh, people know this for more than um, 20 years. Um, <clears throat> Dynamical friction in modified gravity models, uh, in fact, can be stronger. You know, for uh, non-local gravity, we have uh, we have found some expressions, uh, 
uh, expressions and uh, uh, you know in the same situation for the same medium with the same density with the same velocity dispersion then uh, dynamical friction in non-local gravity is 10 times stronger than in uh, Newtonian gravity. You know, but in real situation, when uh, we talk about a real galaxy, then instead of this rho here, rho naught, and uh, velocity dispersion, we, we have to use uh, physical properties of baryonic matter and not dark matter. You know, and then uh, everything changes. Mahmoud, we have uh, five minutes, yep. five minutes left. Thank you, thank you, yeah. And then uh, uh, what we see in the simulations is that dynamical friction is uh, much weaker than a standard case. And so this is the reason why bars um, are fast in uh, modified gravity. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, however, for, uh, uh, you know, comparing our results with observations, uh, pattern is, is not that important, but instead our parameter, which is the ratio of correlation radius over the bar lens, is more important. Uh, let me skip how we can find the bar lens. Um, you know, when uh, in real observations, pattern and speed can be obtained from, from TW method, and uh, one can simply find the rotation uh, correlation radius. You know, it's not that uh, uh, difficult, but finding the bar lens have uh, some difficulties. There are many techniques. Uh, in our simulations, uh, we see that there is an oscillation in bar lens, you know, and uh, uh, if you ignore the bar lens, then you will see that the uh, bar enters the ultra fast regime. This was the uh, what happens for Mundi and model in our simulations. Then we realize that uh, there are oscillations and that there is over uh, estimation for the bar lens, you know, and we have to uh, remove that uh, difficulty. After taking into account this uh, point, very important point, actually here in this figure, you see, uh, you know, in, in four times close to each other, in these top panels, we see some spiral waves, you know, here. But in these two uh, panels, there isn't any spiral wave. These, these are that oscillations that we already discussed. So we have to remove this, you know, it, it can be uh, considered as the noise, you know, and it should be removed from our results. Eventually, at the end, you know, please look, uh, see this. These are for different numbers. This is our parameter for different number of particles, in fact. And this red line belongs to dark matter model. And this uh, orange uh, curve, in fact, belongs to rigid halo. It's interesting that rigid halo be uh, behaves completely different. There isn't any dynamical friction there, you know, similar to modified gravity models. Interestingly, all the uh, uh, modified gravity models uh, are fast. I forgot to say that uh, these two dashed lines uh, indicate the fast bar regime. Okay, we see that modified gravity models all lie in this regime, but dark matter model completely, uh, you know, it, uh, in, you know, the whole time of the simulation, it's uh, outside the, uh, this regime. As I said, this is not new, but the surprise is that in modified gravity, we do not see this. And this problem, in fact, you know, this is a tension in Lambda CDM. This is a recent observation. Uh, observations, you know, for uh, uh, this is an uh, observation. In fact, the uh, authors have removed every source of error and you can uh, trust the result. And so uh, we see that all the galaxies uh, considered by them, uh, you know, lie in the fast bar regime. Uh, and uh, this is completely against what we see in uh, cosmological simulations, isolated simulations in uh, a standard dark matter model. And uh, uh, this graph explicitly shows that, that Eagle uh, cosmological simulations uh, also has a, a serious conflict with observations. These are observation points and these are um, our parameter, you know, uh, uh, obtained from Eagle observations. So there is a big tension, I think, that here, and it's interesting that in modified gravity, we do not see such a problem.
problem. So uh, this is my summary. The, the dynamical friction is weak in the simulated galaxy. Uh, bar instability happens more rapidly in modified gravity models. Modified gravity models that predict weaker bars. I don't know if it, it can be a, a problem for uh, uh, modified gravity models, but they are fast. I mean, the modified gravity models are pretty fast bars. And the other main pro, uh, point is that morphology of disks could be seriously different in vertical direction, and maybe this help to discriminate between modified gravity. Uh, thank you.